helpful tool um, for your Bible studies. So tonight we are learning that it's the I will be with you series. But tonight is I will be with you. I will send the rain. Hallelujah. Now it is a blessing and it is a joy that the word of the Lord is, is reassuring us that I will send the rain. How many of you need rain? How many of you need rain in your life? Come on, somebody. So thank you for being with us. And if you have your Bibles, let's dive right in tonight. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to be reading out of the book of 1 Kings 8, 36. We've been on 8, 36 for a couple of weeks already. Now the word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Kings 8, 36, I will send the rain. That's the name of the, of the, of the topic today. It says, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants. We talked about this last week, your people, Israel, teach them the right way to live. Somebody say right way. Right way. There's a right way to live servants of God. How many of you are a servant of God? Are you a servant of God? Would you just lift your hand real nice and big and say, I'm a servant of God. He chose me. He, he anointed me. He appointed me. Well, the Bible here is talking that King Solomon is saying, forgive the sin of your servants. Teach them the right way to live. There's a right and a wrong way. Uh -oh. Come on. Uh -oh. Don't be playing church today. Don't be playing church and send rain. Come on, somebody send rain on the land. You gave your people for an inheritance. Come on. Now I pray that from what we've learned the last couple of weeks that y'all have begun to pray for the servants of God. Yes, yes. Praying is, is something that is, is part of our contribution as a Christian. You pray for each other. You lift each other up. See, I promise you that when you spend so much time praying for somebody, you don't have time to talk about them. That's right. When you spend time praying for, 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 for God to bless people or for God to anoint or for God to save, for God to deliver people, you don't have time to talk about them. And you don't want to talk about them because you want a breakthrough for them. So when you spend time in prayer, there are certain things that we are supposed to pray for. Now, I pray that we, that you have learned from the last week that you have all begun to pray for the servants of God. King Solomon made a very specific prayer and lifted up the servants as an example as to what our obligations are. It is your obligation. It is my obligation. It is our obligation to pray for the servants of God. To lift them up because you know the servants of God get sick they get sick they get sickness as well they feel depressed sometimes they feel lonely sometimes they feel afraid sometimes they don't know how they're gonna pay the bills the servants of God go through things also but guess what when you're praying for them they'll be all right so I want you to continue praying for the servants the temple was built by King Solomon the leaders prepared it and God filled the temple with his presence. However, King Solomon was burdened with praying for the servants of God. He understood the importance of keeping the servants of God in prayer and interceding for them. Come on, look at somebody and say, who will intercede? Who will intercede? Not picking on, not picking at not bullying, not judging, not destroying, not talking about, but truly interceding. Who will truly intercede for the servants of God? Our obligation is to intercede for the servants of God. Regardless of your position, of your status, of your title, of your education, of your background, it is our obligation to intercede for the servants. Who will intercede? That's what we learned about last week. When the edification of the temple, the preparation of the temple, the filling of the temple, praying for forgiveness, interceding for the servants of God, teaching us to live the right way. When all of this has taken place, now it's time to talk about rain. Can you look at somebody in your room and just say rain? rain. rain. Come on. And the Bible says, and send rain on the land you gave your people as an inheritance. Now God filled the temple and continues to fill the temple. Y'all know that. Remember, we talked about that, that King Solomon built it and the priest, uh, they did not, they did, uh, they, they didn't leave their holy place. Uh, and they prepared the holy place with the presence of God. And then God filled the temple with his, with the thick dark cloud, with his presence. Remember all that. 
Now God filled the temple and continues to fill the temple with his presence. In his presence, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 1611, you can write this down if you'd like. In the Bible, in the, in the book of, of, of Psalm 1611, it says, in his presence, there's fullness of joy, wisdom for the path of life. Now, these are things that you find in his presence. When God shows up, when you're in the presence of God, now there's fullness of joy in the presence of God. And there's, uh, and there's wisdom for the path of life. There is wisdom for the way you should live when you're in the presence of God. Now, if you still are struggling with the way you should live, ask yourself, have I truly been in the presence of God? Now you can be surrounded by the presence of God, but you're not focused. The presence of God filled the temple. So if you are still not changed, if you're still worried about the same things you've been worried about for three months, are you really in the presence of God? Now, now Exodus 33, 14 says, my presence will go with you and give you rest. So we've already learned that the presence of God brings fullness of joy, wisdom for the path of life, and now rest. Come on, somebody. And Joshua 1 and 9 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then in Hebrews 4.16, the word of the Lord says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now in God's presence, there's all these things, all the scriptures that we just read, all of these things occur in the presence of God, grace, mercy, strength, hope, no fear, confidence, uh, the way that we should live, fullness of joy. All of these things occur in the presence of God. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. All of these things, the Bible just said, strength, be encouraged, be strong, do not be afraid, uh, g uh, teaching you the way, the way to live, uh, fullness of joy, mercy, my grace, all of these things are available to you in the presence of God. Wow. Come on and say that. They're available to me. They're available to me. They're available to you in the presence of God. But King Solomon was aware of what was happening when the thick, dark cloud of God's presence filled the temple. In 1 Kings 8, 10, and 11, because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled his temple, Solomon said, the Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. So we know that when God's presence is in the temple, you, we just read the scriptures of what's available to you. So if you're continuing to live a certain way and feel a certain way and have the same issues that you had before you walked into church, you need to be careful because all of these things are available to you in his temple. Right, right, right. He was aware that God is continuing to show up and fill the temple. However, King Solomon prays and he says, send rain yes. on the land you gave your people yes. as an inheritance. So God is filling the temple with all those things that we just read about, all those scriptures mm -hmm. that are available to you every time you're in his presence. Come on, somebody, come on and receive it. All of those things are available to you in his presence. But let me let you know something. There's a difference between that that's available to you and blessings. And we're going to get into that. This is already available to you and it's free. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. He will show you the right way to live. He will be strong and courageous. His grace and his mercy. All of these things are available to you. Do not be afraid. They're available to you when they're, when they're in his presence, but they are not his blessings. These things are free. Wow. However, King Solomon says, send Rain, say it with me. Send rain on the land you gave your people as an inheritance. And you say God didn't give you anything. Uh -oh. Come on. Uh -oh. Now God is filling the temple, but Solomon is still praying for rain. Now there's a difference. 
There is a difference because we already read in the, in the, in the scriptures previously that God filled the temple with his thick, dark cloud. Remember, but now Solomon is praying for rain. So we know that the presence and the rain are two different things. Everything that God gave you is free. Yes. Strength. Come on, say free. 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 Strength, grace, mercy, hope, courage, encouragement, no fear, intelligence, wisdom, health, wealth, land. Say land. Land. Everything that he has given you is free. Everything that's in his presence that's available to you is free. An inheritance is free. The land is free because you inherited it. That inheritance is from God. He promised you the land. The land is free. It's yours. Nobody can take it. Come on, hold on to your land. But... However, King Solomon is praying for God to send rain over the land that is already yours. Mm. Meaning, the land is already, say already, already. Yours. yours. But there's nothing on it. Come on, somebody. I think, I hope I didn't lose you tonight. No, no. The land is free. And it's already yours. But for King Solomon to be asking for rain means that the land that's already yours has nothing on it. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> the land is yours because God promised it to you. But what are you doing with it? What are you doing with the land, with the inheritance that came free? What are you doing with it? Amen. The land is free, but the rain is not. You got to show up if you want the rain. And you got to ask if you want the rain. Now, Psalm 68, 9 says, Rain in abundance, O God. You shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Rain in abundance, O oh God. You restored your inheritance, which is the land, as it languished. Do you know what languished means? Languished means that it was weak and it was suffering. Now God gave the land and inheritance as a promise to you. But it became languished, meaning weak and suffering, and in an unpleasant situation. It became that way. And rain here, he's here, the, uh, King David is saying, rain in abundance, restore your inheritance that is suffering and weak. Rain over the suffering. That's what the scripture is saying. Rain, do you know what rain means? I want you to understand what rain means. Everybody, everybody's praying for rain because they want the, the blessings of God. Well, the blessings, his presence is already free and available to you, but rain is something different. Do you know what rain is? Rain is restoration. Because the word says, reign in abundance, restore your inheritance. Rain, King Solomon is asking for rain on the land because he's asking for God to restore the land. The Bible says that the land became languished, which means that it was weak and it was suffering. So King Solomon is asking for the land that is rightfully ours to be to have rain because we have become weak and we are suffering wow. restoration over what has been languished suffering and weak and king solomon is asking god to reign in abundance over the inheritance meaning restore in abundance the weak and the suffering the land has become weak and is suffering, meaning we have become weak and we're suffering. The people have become weak and are suffering in unpleasant situations. That's what, that's what languished means. Languished means weak and suffering through unpleasant situations. 
So when King Solomon is asking God for rain, he's asking for the land to be restored. He's asking God to restore the weak and the ones that are suffering in unpleasant situations. That's what rain is. Restore. Restore means to mend the wound, to heal broken, to bring back something that was taken, to repair, to strengthen, love, activate forgiveness, and get it working again. That's what restore means. That's what rain means. So what's happening here is that the temple was ready and the temple was filled with God's presence. The Bible says that God filled the temple with his presence, with the cloud. Somebody say cloud. cloud. He filled the temple with the cloud. But King Solomon still needed rain for the land. Meaning the people have become languished. They become weak and they're suffering in situations that they shouldn't be in. The land is free, but you gotta show up for the rain. That's why rain is so important to the land because it is weak and suffering and it's not okay. Let me let you know something, people of God. It's not okay for the people of God to be weak and suffering. Now I didn't say meek and humble. I said weak and suffering. But this is the land that God himself gave you. So God himself gave it to you as an inheritance. The inheritance cannot die. We need rain. Come on, you can just comment and look at somebody next to you and say, we need rain. We need rain. Now in the book of Hebrews 6, 7, it says, for the land has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop it's useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. Did you understand this scripture? For the land has drunk the rain. That means you received the restoration the rain that often falls on it and produces something, something useful to those. It's useful to those that cultivated the ground and that receives a blessing from God. Waiting for rain, this is what the scripture is saying. The land has drunk the rain, meaning I waited for the rain. I showed up for the rain. Come on, somebody say show up. Show up. I showed up for the rain. I drank the rain. The Bible says here, it says, for the land has drunk the rain. That means I accepted the restoration. And you know what's going on? Is that sometimes the people of God don't want to be restored. Sometimes the people of God want to continue living in unforgiveness. They want to continue living upset and anger and, uh, and, just, and, and living this life of just being sour. But the word says, for the land has drunk the rain. It means I accepted the restoration. I accepted the restoration. Can you look at somebody and say, accept the restoration. Accept. The land needs to drink the rain. That means we need to accept the restoration. The rain is the restoration. We need to accept what God is wanting to do through us. We need to accept what God is trying to mend and fix. God is trying to get you out of situations. God is trying to mend and to heal and to restore you. But the people of God are wanting to continue living bitterly and upset and depressed. The people of God want to continue living weak and suffering. What do you mean? Can you imagine a land that doesn't accept rain? Can you imagine a land that doesn't drink the rain that God provides? That's what's happening in the people of God. 
The people of God are not drinking the restoration. We're not accepting the restoration that God is giving us. So wait for the rain, show up for rain. Somebody say show up, show up. drink. The land has to drink the rain, receive the restoration and produce a crop, something useful. When there is rain on the land, the land produces something useful. When there is restoration in your life, you should produce something useful. Now examine yourself if there's nothing useful that you've produced. If you haven't produced anything useful, that means you haven't accepted the restoration. That means you haven't said, Lord, here I am. I'm ready. Like the word says, I've been waiting. I've drank the rain. I've produced something. If I haven't produced something, it's because I haven't received the rain. And the last one is cultivate. Prepare. Cultivate the ground. Cultivate the land. Prepare something useful. You need to wait for rain. You need to prepare for rain, drink the rain, receive the rain and produce something from the rain. Prepare for the rain. All these years we have thought that the rain means blessings, but rain is restoration. Rain is the restoration of the land. Rain is the restoration of the land that has become languished. La rain is the restoration to the people that have become weak and are suffering. So if you will understand what King Solomon is doing here, he prepared, he, he built the temple. He prepared the temple. God filled the temple. And then Sol King Solomon asks for forgiveness of the servants, of the sins of the servants. And he asks for, for God to teach them how to live. And now he's asking for rain. Rain is restoration. But what you cultivate during the rain is your blessing. See, because everything that we talked about earlier in the scripture, everything that happens in the sanctuary, be encouraged, be strong. There's fullness of joy, peace, mercy, grace. All of these things happen in the sanctuary. They are free and they're available to you. But if you want a blessing, then you have to receive the rain. Your blessing, what the blessing is what you did before, during, and after the rain. That's your blessing. What you did during the rain determines what you produced and what you produced is your blessing. Am I, is anybody understanding me tonight? Yes. See, we're thinking that we're going to show up to the church and we're just going to be blessed left and right. But this scripture is letting us know that when you receive the rain, your blessing is determined on your position during the rain. Your blessing is determined on what you are doing while it's raining. Your blessing is determined on your position, on where you're at, on your thinking, on what's going on while it's raining. That will determine your blessing. Everything else is free. The joy, the mercy, the grace, God gives you all the resources you need to be successful and to be, and to be on top of your game, to be strong, to be encouraged. He gives you everything you need, but if you want blessings, then you gotta, it's determined by where you are during the rain. That's why King Solomon prayed for rain because rain means restoration. You have to have rain before you can have your crops. Restoration is required before you can receive your blessing. Let me let you know that tonight. Restoration is required before you can receive your blessings. Rain needs to be accepted. Restoration needs to be accepted before you can receive your blessing. The rain is determining your blessing. The rain is, is, is going to, to bring forth restoration. But what you are doing 
during the rain determines your blessing. So King Solomon said, Lord, send the rain. He didn't say send the blessing. He said send rain. He said rain. Why? Because, <laughs> because rain means restoration. And if you don't have restoration, you won't even know what a blessing is. If you haven't received restoration in your life, then you will not even know that a blessing is in front of you. If you haven't received blessing, if you haven't worked through the rain, if you haven't worked through restoration, then you will not, you will not accept or you will not uh, um, care for the blessing. But if you receive the rain, and if you receive the restoration, your blessing is determined on what you're doing while it's raining. So I encourage you tonight to ask God to send the rain. Ask God to restore. Rain means restoration. Restoration to a land that is weak, that is suffering. But remember, it's God's land. It's the land that he gave you. So what are you doing about the rain? Amen, amen. Come on, let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We love you, Lord, and we bless you. We exalt your name. That you would send the rain and that we would be ready for restoration. We would be ready to be restored. We would be ready to be, to be, to be able to produce something, something that would require us and, and allow us to have a blessing. Lord, because our blessing is determined on what we are doing during the rain. Lord, let us accept restoration. Lord, that we would accept that you bring hope and that you bring that you restore our joy that you restore our marriages that you restore our family that you restore our mind that you would restore our thinking in the name of Jesus only when we're restored will we appreciate the blessing only when there is rain will we appreciate the blessing so I thank you tonight Lord we open up our hearts to you we love you, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity, and I ask you tonight to send the rain. In your holy and precious name, and everybody says, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that you are.